right, it's story time with the Bearded Beast, baby. Uh, so about a month ago, I started having some issues with my bicep. Um, and I thought, uh, due to my fibromyalgia, I figured it was just regular pain. Um, but as I bowled tournaments, um, the more I bowled, the more problem I seemed to have. And I started actually getting pain uh, in through my thumb. Earlier this week, uh, I did some kind of experimentation, uh, trying a few things out. And we actually realized that when I took my thumb out of the ball, I ended up in less pain than when I had my hand in the ball. I was able to throw it to my regular ball speed. Um, there was no pain in my fingers, no pain in my hand or anything. We've come to the conclusion that there's some kind of issue with my thumb. So I thought this might be the perfect opportunity to put together a video on what it's like to make the transition from one-handed to two-handed. Now, I don't know how long this injury is going to last. This could be something permanent. This could be something that lasts a month, a few months. Who knows? But I still have league to bowl. I still have tournaments that I want to shoot. The knowledge of how to play the lanes, what I know about how to approach the two-handed game, being someone who's coached two-handers, <laughs> I feel like this should be easy. However, in talking to my friends out there who have made the switch, I know that this is going to be, this is going to be fun. So without further ado, I guess we're going to start sharing things. Uh, so right now, let me grab the uh, camera here. I am just in my shop, plugging up a few, you can see I've got a couple here for myself. I got some customer balls there, that one up there, that one's not for me, that's not for me. That purple one is, and that one right there is, and not that one, that spare ball right there, uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm plugging up some stuff so that I can drill uh, some equipment to get at least get down on the lanes and get um, kind of figure out what's going on. Now the first thing I had to do is figure out what our base pitches are going to be in my uh, fingers. Up till now when I've bowled two-handed I've just changed the grips in my one-handed ball which is five-eighths uh, reverse in both fingers and three-eighths three-eighths lateral. So this is going to be interesting. Now I just went online and I checked out an awesome video from Bowling Science, uh, Mikey Pinnell and the guys, and uh, they did an awesome video on first fits for two-handed bowlers. And what it's looking like is we're going to try, we're going to go straight from scratch. Um, so for a right-handed dominant two-handed bowler, we're going to go with uh, on the middle finger, one half lateral by one eighth forward. So it's gonna get tucked a little bit underneath. And then on the ring finger, we're gonna go with five eighths. So pretty much what I've been used to and three eighths. What this is gonna do is it's gonna roll my hand under a little bit. It's gonna move my flare line away from my fingers. Um, I'm one of those weird people. I'm just one of those weird people, let's start there. Uh, but I'm one of those weird people that my two-handed pap and my one-handed pap were exactly the same. So this is going to be interesting. Uh, with it tucked a little bit more underneath, I become a little bit more middle finger dominant. So it's going to change the tilt a little bit to get it to react a little bit more. Honestly, I'm not sure how this is going to work. This is a performance fit before you start, but everybody's got to start somewhere. and We have to have a baseline. I, I like Mikey's because the way he explained it, having the ball kind of rolled underneath so it gets you a little bit more traction through here the fingers are going to leave at the same time it's going to be different from what i'm used to but then again everything's going to be different than what i'm used to uh our first arsenal that we're going to go with uh it looks like uh i've got that as i said i've got that self a purple hammer right here uh, i'm filling an old track intuition that i had uh, i also have let me see here i'm gonna boop I have an old Brunswick Zenith that I've uh, already filled here. I'm going to surface up. And of course, that Maxim, uh, I'm going to uh, fill it and uh, use it for a spare ball. Uh, I'm still looking. I'm trying to decide here. I do have a, um, a Trailblazer Solid and an 
Ebonite Polaris that I just recently plugged. I'll show you these. Um, and here's a tip for you guys. Um, black, uh, when you're using uh, different colors to try to get swirls and stuff in your Pro Shop, um, black is a very, very heavy color. Um, you can see here the blue that I used uh, for this ball is pretty close. Um, I used that blue with that black to try to get both fingers. And even though I let it sit and get um, start to heat up, the black still managed to be heavier and get under it. So I ended up with two black finger holes. Um, that's just a little side note for you Pro Shop guys out there. Um, but I've got a Trailblazer. And I've also got this Polaris uh, that I've recently filled. It's another one of those ones, the good and the bad. Uh, not, not too bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. I, whatever. But uh, I also have access to, well, all the brands of Brunswick. So I gotta find myself a benchmark ball still. Uh, I know that everyone's gonna say that that purple hammer, that that purple hammer is gonna be my benchmark ball, and that's probably correct. But I, I just want to make sure that I've got uh, at least three balls that I can take down to league this week and uh, be able to throw. Uh, so I guess the first thing that we have to do is we're gonna have to drill up a ball with the new finger pitches these base finger pitches, and we're gonna have to see where my pap is. So I'm down here in the center now, uh, and I gotta be honest, I'm nervous. I've messed around with two-handed, I've coached it, um, but I've never really dedicated to it before. Um, and with this injury to my arm, it's, to give you an idea, we shot our last set of videos. I was barely able to get through it, and then I had to take two weeks off, because I couldn't even hold a pen. So, at least now that we've got an idea what's going on, maybe this will help it, but uh, it's kind of weird. Oh, look at that big bald head. Good heavens. You could show a movie on that five head. But I gotta be honest, I'm a little nervous. I'm nervous for my elbow. Um, I'm nervous that I'm just gonna keep throwing it in the gutter. I mean, I'm a 200 plus average bowler um, in a very, very hard center. I don't know. I don't know if I can get to the level that I'm at. Um, as a regular bowler, as a two-handed bowler. But I guess, I mean, every, I guess everybody goes through that. Ugh. You know, despite being, you know, open and, and knowing how to play the lanes and how to address the lanes and stuff, when you start something new, there's always a lot of trepidation. And uh, I think it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be an interesting adventure. Okay, uh, so I guess we're gonna start off here with some drills. I'm gonna try doing some, a zero-step drill just to get warmed up. And then I guess we'll kind of go from there. gets to the bottom of the swing. I'm just trying to kind of push it forward just to get it off my hand. I'm not trying to do anything special. And so far, so good. Um, now we're going to take, try to take a couple of uh, full shots and uh, see how my elbow feels. And then we'll, uh, we'll see where we go from there. Uh, i got to get my pap while I'm here too. So uh, let's get to that. All right, so we're gonna get the uh, pap of the ball here. We're gonna get it cleaned off. Let me grab my stuff here. First, we've got our armadillo 
our Pro Sec from Turbo, pen, some tape. We got everything we need here. So first I'm gonna take a shot and get the uh, oil line on the ball and then we're going to uh, come back here and we're gonna get the uh, lines marked off. Okay, so here we are. It's kinda hard to see, but our first line I can mark it off properly here. It's going right there. That shows us our line. Go up a little higher. Okay. So now we're gonna take this guy here. We're gonna match up where the lines are. So the actual shape of the lines. And we're gonna mark a little point over here. And we're gonna put a little piece of tape on it and see if that's our path. So it's just a little bit off here. So we're gonna take a look to see where the lines came on that one versus where we drew them. Okay, you can see there's some finger holes. This is going to change it a little bit, but this is just to get our first idea. Um, so our lines are a little more up and down. So let's just move that up a little bit. We'll give it another try here. that time so I'm gonna grab out the armadillo and we're gonna do it again Oop. oh yep that's definitely different that's why you got to make sure you throw a good shot when you take your path oh yeah huge difference huge difference all right moved it by about an inch so let's give it another throw here and see how that works. Okay, so we're pretty close now. Uh, I'm gonna get, uh, I'm gonna throw a couple more shots just to dial it in. And then we're gonna come back here and we're gonna measure it off. Uh, some of you are gonna are gonna comment on this. Uh, I literally just took a ball off the rack. Um, the reason I took it is because I knew, based on my old pap, that these holes were just about where my uh, pap was anyway. Uh, and as we know that uh, weight holes on your pap, though we don't use them anymore, they had zero effect on the ball. They were just a weight removal, as opposed to a, a, a P3 or a P4 hole that would have had a significant uh, effect on the ball. So we went with it. Yes, I know our pap isn't gonna be 100% exact. We're just trying to get a baseline so we can get some balls drilled. But from what I saw throwing the ball a couple times afterwards, just to double check the pap, um, I'm really happy with the fit and the feel throwing it. Uh, I felt like uh, once I found my timing, it definitely was a lot easier to throw the ball. It was a lot easier to throw the ball, get it to rev up in the right spot and to hook. Now, when I said before, I wanted to clear something up because uh, I thought this might be a little uh, confusing. When I said my two-handed pap and my one-handed pap were the same, I meant the point on the ball. Um, obviously with a thumb hole, it's gonna be in a different spot as opposed to drilling, uh, looking at it from the center of the finger holes. It was more of, you know, hey, when I throw my two-handed, my one-handed ball two-handed, this is what it does. So we're gonna, we're just gonna make some lines here so that we can find our center of grip. Get that marked off. And we know, you can see I'm just making some lines here. Across, vertically and horizontally, we want to know exactly where the center is. Like that. And we're gonna do some measuring to find my two-handed path. So we're gonna go from the center of my finger holes here, all the way over here to where my 
Uh, vertical line happens, and it is five and five eighths over. On my one-handed balls, this would be a positive axis point. However, because we're going through the finger lines, we now have a negative axis point, and that negative axis point happens to be one and one eighth down. So my pap is currently five and five eighths laterally by one and one eighth down. Now, as I progress as a two-handed bowler, obviously this is gonna change, but this is our starting point. We have a good fit, we have a good feel. I've gone with two uh, 13 16 Turbo Quad 1 inserts. And this, I'm probably doing this wrong, uh, but for my personal feeling, uh, I like actually being able to get my ring finger a little deeper in and my, my middle finger just not quite as deep in. I just, it felt a very comfortable rolling the ball over in my hand. And obviously it was coming off my hand really nicely. Um, got to throw it nowhere on my fingers so far. Oh, I got to clean my nails, I'm sorry guys. Uh, that's what happens when you're working in the shop all day. You get dirty fingers, but no rubbing that I can see yet. Um, we may have to open up this finger, or sorry, this finger, the middle finger, just a little bit. This is where we're going to start from. So next, we got to wait for those balls that we uh, that we have filling. We got to wait for them to finish filling, and then we got to drill up an arsenal for our very first league night uh, bowling two-handed. We still have no idea how to shoot spares, but we're going to learn. I think it's important for every coach, even though it's not your personal style, be able to relate with your bowlers, be able to understand what they're going through. And by being able to bowl two-handed during my injury, I think it's going to give me a better insight into all of my bowlers that I work with. So uh, when next we meet, we're going to be drilling some bowling balls for the new Arsenal. Came into this this morning, uh, you know, T-minus one day to league, and we had a damn failure. Um, it's the unfortunate part. Every company goes through them, but we had a dam failure, and it was pretty catastrophic. Yeah, nice new piece to my desk back here. Um, so we're gonna have to fix this up, and maybe, hopefully, be able to have a spare ball for tomorrow. Question mark. Okay, guys. So we're back after uh, making a lot of dust and furiously drilling here. We've got. Uh, looks like a four ball plus a spare ball arsenal. <clears throat> um, you can see where the uh, we had that catastrophic dam failure. We actually have the ball refilling over here, and I managed to get a lot of the gunk off. It's going to be close to see if we can uh, get this thing resurfaced in time. Um, but let's just go over a little bit of what I have here for us. Um, so first of all, we needed a benchmark ball, something that was going to be smooth. Uh, I don't think there's anybody who will debate that uh, purple hammer plus two-hander equals good. So we've got uh, my old purple hammer. We've re-drilled it here, and we've gone four and a half by four by three and a half, two LS. Um, just to give you an idea, we wanted something that was going to stand up pretty quickly, uh, that we could lay some surface on for heavier patterns or go with lighter surface and kind of use that motion to get the ball down lane. Um, but speaking of heavy, we've redrilled a, or we're going to redrill a Polaris here. We're gonna go five and a half by five and a half by two. We want this ball to be relatively smooth when it gets down lane. Um, it's probably gonna crack, you guys are seeing this. Um, since we're drilling around the line here, there's like an eighth of an inch here. Yeah, I know this ball's probably gonna crack, but we gotta start someplace um, figuring out our arsenals. Um, so we need something that's gonna hook for us tomorrow. Speaking of hooking, when once we get some friction, uh, we're looking at a Zenith Pearl. Uh, we've gone five by four and a half by four and a half. Um, so this larger last number here is gonna get the ball to stand up a little faster for us. Uh, we've gone with a five inch pin so we can get it down lane. Uh, since I actually have tilt, uh, I have 10 to 15 degrees tilt. Which was weird as a two-hander. Um, so I get to use a bit of a longer uh, pin to pap distance to get the ball to go down and flare a little bit differently. Uh, the four and a half inch, as we said, is going to uh, make it stand up a little bit more. And you can see that that pin is kind of in a symmetrical area for uh, if you'd see like one handed bowlers. Um, so this is going to be a ball at uh, 2000. I, I got to do a little bit more on it. Probably going to take it to 3000. This is going to be my ball up when I need to move left and get it to a friction point, hopefully. Knock on knock on wood uh, and then we've drilled up a melee jab here five and a half by four and a half by four and a half same idea we wanted just a little bit more length out of it um, for when if when 
they get uh, a lot more friction down lane. Um, all the finger holes, we've gone two and a half inches deep. We haven't done anything funny with them yet to change the RG or the differential. We've just used the layout so far. And uh, I guess I gotta put some grips in these things. And the next time we talk, it'll be league time. And uh, we'll be seeing what happens for the very first league two-handed. This is gonna be interesting. So the first shot didn't go too bad. Um, first thing at a practice, I noticed um, spinning the ball a lot. I'm creating more rotation, more spin than I am ball speed. So I really have to make sure that I'm throwing the ball forward. Um, everything hooks so much. No ball speed, everything just hooks. You just can't get it to stop hooking. Um, God, I'm already tired. Um, anybody who tells you that it isn't more physically um, exerting to throw two-handed than one-handed, ask a fat guy like me. Holy moly. Um, next shot's coming up in a second. Uh, I ended up going to the Stellar, which is my weakest ball already. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I got to remember to stay behind and get it to roll forward more. Um, just from a coach's standpoint, I know that I got to get it less ro less side rotation. Uh, I need either more ball speed or more forward rotation. I'm already up against the ball return area, so this is going to be something fun. Okay, so we got through game one, 173. Uh, more strikes than I was expecting. Uh, now we're going into game two. It's gonna be a little more difficult. Uh, that uh, the stellar that I threw game one is getting way too angular down lane. I'm gonna try the purple, but uh, like I threw the first frame of game two um, with the stellar and it just just blew through sideways, so I'm, I'm gonna try the purple, and then uh, we'll figure it out from there. Got to remember to roll it forward, though. This is it's a lot of work. I'm getting tired. So I threw the stellar, and it was going down, and just throwing the purple, and I think it's too early. We've got the zenith, we've got the melee jab, and we've got the the Polaris. What do you think we should go with? Try the job. Okay. This is the strong, stronger center for the rules. Now, it is at 4,000 though, so it's at oh. maximum response. Okay. But I was yeah. thinking the Polaris might be too early, but I I mean, too early is the purple right now. Yeah. So. We'll try this. That's what you think. Are you telling me that because my brain thinks that? Always going to be exactly. Okay. And then I'm second guessing yourself later. Okay. So that was a bit strong. Uh, Maybe we'll try the Polaris. Like it's early, but it's supposed to be smooth. According to the layout, because I went with Chris Vise, yeah. we have similar tilt, but he has obviously more ball speed and more talent. Um, so I went with his five and three quarter by five and three quarter by two inch. Which is, when you go with the two inch uh, last number in the, the two LS, it's supposed to make it smoother. Okay. As opposed to like that I just threw. It's uh, four and a half inch, and you saw how it stood up. Yeah. So the flare is going to be a good choice to get it to roll a little bit smoother, a little bit more smoother. Yeah, because I think the purple 
I think it's a three and a half inch, so it's standing up fairly quickly, and we can yeah. see that. Yeah. How much it's hooking. That purple didn't hook that much for me when I threw it one-handed. Yeah. Now it's Oh, good try, good try. So yeah. Polaris. Polaris. Can do. All right, let's do this. Okay, Nick, we're through two games. Uh, coach made the right call because Coach is smart. Right, Coach? Yeah. Uh, went to the Polaris. Polaris looks a lot better than that purple. I think we need a lot more surface on that purple. Yeah. Um, more surface on that one, maybe less surface on the other one. Yeah. A little bit more early control, right? Yeah, I think 4,000 plus polish on the jab might be a tad too much. I'm not used to having motion. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. All right, let's get, get into game three here. Okay, a couple of uh, anecdotal things. Um, one, uh, definitely going to change the finger sizes. Uh, as we bold, my middle finger has swollen up compared to this one. So this one at 13 is good. Definitely going to have to go to like a 7 or a 27 for my uh, middle finger. Because uh, I'm really middle finger dominant right now. Um... Second, every time I go to throw a shot, I keep trying to blow in my thumb hole, but I don't have one, so I'm just blowing on the ball and I look like an idiot. Two-handed problems. Okay guys, so we got done uh, just under 700 for our first four games. Uh, so not awful, uh, pretty happy with the result. Uh, did a little bit of practicing afterwards. Uh, unfortunately got, I got a blister. Uh, yeah, going with 13-13 didn't work. My finger started to uh, swell up pretty good. So we're gonna redrill those middle fingers probably to a 27, go 27 and 13. Um, some of the su success I found, I found um, turning my fingers a little bit gave me a little bit more strength uh, to throw the ball a little bit harder. Um, other than that, I'm pretty pleased with th how things went to start. Um, some of the equipment I just didn't get to throw because there wasn't enough oil out. Um, but yeah, pretty happy so far for the first time doing two-handed in a league. Um, as you know, this is kind of day one of bowling full-time this way. So uh, I think that's going to wrap it up for this um, this episode. Uh, next one for next week, we'll get together and we'll uh, we'll look at the equipment that I drilled. Um, try to see if we need to drill anything new. We'll of course fix the fingers, and uh, uh, we'll talk about how much pain I'm going to be in tomorrow. I swear. Um, the thing they don't tell you about. My, my ankle's tired, my slide ankle's tired, my butt's tired. Like all the, the trying to get low and push with your legs to create ball speed rather than your arms. My legs are tired. Um, and my shoulder right here, cause it doesn't, it's a different kind of motion. It's back towards, um, I don't know. It's just different than what I've done one handed. It feels like it's just a little tender in the front here. Could also be the bicep. Um, couple of shots I stuck in and it kind of pulled a little bit but yeah I think that's it so until next time guys we'll uh, we'll see you lane side one or two handed thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a show so until next time guys we'll see you lane side